Hey, what's up my dudes? Deveorn here, bringing you part 5 of our Divine Spell Guide casting series. In this video, we're going to be talking about every spell available to Divine Casters, Shamans, Druids, Clerics, all the multi-class combinations at level 5. We're going to talk about every single spell, what they do, what they're good for, and whether or not you should be taking them in your Baldur's Gate runs. Now, just a couple quick caveats before we get started. We do play with a particular set of rules. We play hardcore. If the main character dies, it's game over. There's no saving and no reloading. Two, we play an insane difficulty, so every single person in our party is taking double damage. And finally, we play with all components of SCS installed, SCS of course being Sword Coast Stratagems, and this will actually enhance the abilities of pretty much every magical creature in the game, as well as giving enemy spellcasters the ability to cast spells instantly at the start of fight, granting them HLAs, all sorts of fun stuff to make the game a lot more challenging. So everything I'm going to say is going to be in regards to that particular set of rules that we just went over. However, 99% of what I say will also apply to your core rules unmodded runs as well. There are going to be a couple differences between the two, and I will go over those as best I can. For example, sometimes a spell is really crap in the original game, but really amazing with these mods. And sometimes there's a spell that's really amazing in the original game and really crappy with these mods. And I'll do my best to highlight that for you. We do have a tier list set up here for every single spell as well. S tier are spells at the very top. These spells are absolutely incredible. You should stock your spell book full of them. A tier spells are spells that are situationally incredible or generally pretty good. B tier spells are spells that are okay or situationally pretty good. C tier spells are spells that for the most part are pretty crappy or there's really, you don't have anything else to take so that's why you have it there. And then finally at the very bottom are RP tier spells where... There, unless you're actively are role playing, there's really no reason for you to ever take those spells. Let's go and get started with our first crappy spell of the day, and that is Animal Rage. This is going to be available to Druid and Shamans only. Has a decent cast time of 8, will target one creature, last 15 rounds, range of touch, and it will boost the target strength score to 19, give it an additional 20 hit points, 20% movement rate, and plus 2 to all saves. This is basically going to be the Druid Shaman version of... Um, Berserker Rage that you can cast on other people and animals, obviously, since it's called Animal Rage. This will target a creature, and it will boost their strength to 19. The problem is, every single creature in this game that you want to use is either A, garbage, because it's like a dire wolf or something, or C, it's a greater werebear, and you don't want to be reducing its strength to 19. Plus 20 hit points on paper seems like quite a bit, and in fact, 20 HP is a lot, especially keep in mind summons do not take double damage on insane difficulty. They're taking normal damage at all time. So having an extra 20 uh, hit points is actually pretty damn nice. 20% movement rate, this is also really, really strange. Uh, greater werebears will actually come with boots of speed that's in their inventory on their feet when they are summoned and pretty much every bear in the game has those built in as well in order to make them move faster if you have the SDS component faster bears so when you actually cast this spell for some dumb reason you actually slow them down making them slower and you're reducing their strength so all they're getting is a plus two bonus to say is but who gives a shit, you know? So when I think about who I should be using this on, it's like, if I could use this on Kagan, okay, you know, that's not bad. 20 HP, bonus movement speed. Everything here is great if you're using it on Kagan, but if you're in Baldur's Gate 2, which is where you get this spell, right? You don't want to use this because you're going to have equipment that's going to be boosting their strength. Um, you're going to have... I mean, the only thing you'd get out of this if you could cast it on party members would be the saves, but like I said, it's Animal Rage, right? So it seems like it'd be good to cast on animals, but we'll talk about why Animal Summoning 2 and 1, 2, and 3 are all garbage in just a second. So the only good Animal Summoning you have in this game is Greater Werebear. And when you cast this spell on the Werebear, you're actually nerfing it across the board. All it's gaining is a little HP and saving throws. And then on top of it, you have a 5% chance to make the target go berserk, attacking friend and foe alike. I just, I have no fucking idea why you'd ever want to use this spell. I don't know where this spell would be useful. You could say, well, use it on animal summoning, right? Because those animals are crap, and so if you give them animal rage, they're going to be great. Well, that's great, but you only can cast animal weight rage on one creature. You get a couple summons with animal summoning. Not to mention, you're now using two level 5 spells in order to get a really mediocre result. So it's like, why the hell would you ever want to use this thing? It just, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't fucking make sense to me. 
If you could use this in Baldur's Gate 1 on your party, that would be fucking incredible. But you don't get it until Baldur's Gate 2. So it's just, it's, it's so fucking strange to me. It's so fucking strange to me. I don't know. I mean, like I said, the two saving throws are great, but there's all sorts of other spells that are way better for giving saving throws to party and creatures. You have emotions, you have um, improved invis, you have spirit armors, you have a million spells to boost saving throws in Baldur's Gate, especially if you're playing with Icewind Dale spells, which this one is, by the way. It's just, it blows my mind. I just, this is a spell that probably would have been absolutely amazing in Icewind Dale and just doesn't carry over well to Baldur's Gate. This is a big skip right here. This is a C2 spell all the way. Like you said, if you could get this lower level, if you got this in Baldur's Gate 1 and could use it on like a, a dire wolf that you summon with a wand, a monster summoning, that actually would be, you know, fairly decent because it will turn in with these bonuses to a tanky summon. But the fact you don't get it till BG2 just absolutely kills it. Makes this absolutely crap. I guess technically, if you take Faldorn or a pure druid, you could get this in Baldur's Gate 1. And if you use a wand of monster summoning, because you're not going to have a lot of level 5 spells, and you get a dire wolf, and then you hit it with an animal rage, then, <laughs> I mean, at that point, okay. But, like, compared to what other spells you get for level 5, I mean, this spell is just absolutely shit, man. Terrible. C tier all the way. Big pass on this, along with Animal Summoning 2 here. Animal Summoning 2 also has a decent cast time of 8. The duration is 3 turns, and this will summon 1 to 3 animals that have 8 hit dice or less. Um, absolutely garbage. This is going to give you a small amount of baby bears. This is not going to be amazing or impressive whatsoever. These summons are going to have very low HP despite having 8 hit dice, and they're going to melt in seconds. By the time you get this spell, whatever you're fighting is going to cleave through them so fast. It's just, it's pathetic. Even, like, even if you are a pure druid at the end of Baldur's Gate 1, right? And you have level 5 spells. Even if you summon these things, by then you're at, the, you're at Baldur's Gate City, right? You're already in Baldur's Gate City. So what are you going to summon them for? The Iron Throne? They're going to they're gonna kill these things in seconds. And they're going to melt so fast. I just, I don't understand where this would be useful in this game. Whether you're playing with core rules, unmodded, or with SES. It's just, it's so lackluster compared to what else you get at this level. I just, it kills me. And in the original Baldur's Gate, monster summoning used to be really strong. Sa same thing with Animate Dead. Because you'd get like five or six summons every time you cast the spell. And there was no limit either, right? If you wanted to, you could stack monster summoning on multiple wizards and just make the whole screen get taken over with summons. You That's how I actually killed Sarabok in the original game, was abusing monster summoning. That was the only way you could kill him. Because he's completely immune to magic in the original game, right? And so I, and you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, right? Because he's a level 15 fighter. So it's like, what other option do you have aside to abuse summons, right? But uh, when you're also, I was a little kid. And obviously, there's, there's other ways to do it now. But you know what I mean. But uh, they nerfed the hell out of summons. Bioware nerfed the shit out of summons for Baldur's Gate 2 on purpose. And even after doing so, in BG2, people would still abuse summons all the way through up to Throne of Ball. And Throne of Ball summons just drop off a cliff. And the original unmodded Baldur's Gate 2 summons aren't that terrible, but this one in particular is pretty damn terrible. Especially compared to the other spells you get. C tier all the way. Nothing really amazing you could say about these two spells. Like I said, even if you could combine them, and even if Animal Summoning 2 summoned a decent creature, and then you could combine it with Animal Rage, you're still wasting two level 5 spell slots that could just be used for so many other amazing spells. Up next is Chaotic Commands. This is our first S tier spell. This is available to Cleric, Druid, and Shaman. Just like, um, excuse me. Animal Summoning is available to Druid and Shaman. I don't know if I mentioned that. But that was also in the original game. This is not Icewind Dale, along with Chaotic Commands. Not Icewind Dale. Cleric, Druid, and Shaman. Amazing spell, S tier. This will target one creature. Very quick cast time at three. Will last for one turn per level. And this will make them immune to Charm, Command, Confusion, Domination, Sleep, Maze, and Spiritual Lock. In addition, you'll be protected from the Psionic Blast of Mind Flayers. This will not prevent your brains from getting slurped out. I've been told by someone in the past that this would prevent your brains from getting slurped out. That does not work. Hit a commands does not make you immune to the int drain that mind flayers do. So if you have low AC, you're still going to get slurped really quickly with chaotic commands up. However, you're not going to be able to get held. You're not going to be able to get hit by sonic blast. You will not take damage from detonation, which is a really nasty magical damage ability that mind flayers have with SCS. And you will also be immune to Maze, which is really useful late TOB. A lot of enemies will start to cast Maze. Um, Charm, Command, Confusion, Domination. It's an amazing spell. 
amazing spell. And not only what this does is amazing, but it lasts for one turn per level, which is even more amazing. So that's one minute per level of the caster. And when you're at this stage of the game, your clerics are going to be like, even if you're a double or triple multi-class, you're looking at level 15 baseline, right? 10 to 15, 10 if you're a triple, 15 if you're a uh, multi. And if you're uh, just a single class, you're 18 plus. So this thing basically lasts for 20 minutes of real time, right? 10 to 15 to 20 minutes of real time. So this is not going to wear off until you go to sleep. Until your character rests, this spell will be up the whole damn time. So just like protection from fire, protection from cold, this spell lasts a really, really long time. It will last until you rest, or obviously until you get dispelled. And what it does is absolutely amazing. And there's so many fights in the game where you're going to get hit, especially in TOB, where you're going to get hit with Maze, where you're going to get hit with all these really nasty abilities. Uh, vampires love the spam domination. Uh, obviously, the Mind Flayers, this is absolutely critical when fighting Mind Flayers. And the Drow, especially, will also love to use a variety of these nasty spells. Sendai's Enclave, particularly. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. There's so many uses for this spell. This is a spell that I feel like is almost baseline, where, like, if your character has just rested... You want to cast Stone Skin, Fire, Cold, Chaotic Commands. Maybe an armor spell. Maybe one or two other spells. But the, the fact that this lasts so long is just absolutely incredible. This is typically what I take a lot of, late TOB especially. Because I want to have this in my whole damn party. Just to make absolutely sure that they don't get screwed over by some garbage. Really amazing spell. Can't say enough good things about it. Take this spell. All right, up next is Cure Critical Wounds. Uh, this is also for Cleric, Druid, and Shaman. Um, this has been adjusted for uh, Icewind Dale. However, even though it got buffed with Icewind Dale, it's still crap. Uh, this will target one creature, decent cast time of eight, and it will heal them for 5d8 plus one, up to a max of plus 25 points of damage. Um, so this will heal up to 40 plus 25, depending on your level. Garbage. Absolute garbage. There are not enough level five spell slots available for you to make use of this spell, you will be taking way too much damage on insane difficulty especially. Typically what ends up happening is your back line is a mage or it's a cleric, it's not getting hit, aside from maybe a Melsonute Meteor or one occasional spell. You could get rid of that the little damage you take in with a uh, healing potion. You don't need cure critical wounds. And your front line is going to be Corgan or a mage tank who is also not taking damage. But Corgan will be taking tons. And especially if your front line is like a barbarian or a dwarven defender or any other fighter class. Or maybe you're playing heavy fighter in general. You wanted to play with Kaldorn and you wanted to take Valigar or Minx or what have you. They're going to be getting absolutely pounded in melee. They're going to be getting absolutely dumpstered. And the way the level curve works in Baldur's Gate 2 is you will get six spells almost immediately after getting level five spells. You start to get XP very, very rapidly in BG2. So by the time you get level five spells, level six are already right around the corner. And at level six, you get heal, which heals somebody completely to full. Completely, 100%. So Corrigan's sitting on 150 HP. You heal him to full. That's worth three cure critical wounds. For the same cast time, for the same... It's just... It kills me. I, I don't know, again, like, all the other cure spells... They just, not all the other, but this is at a level to where you have a variety of really powerful spells. As both Druid, Shaman, and Cleric, all three of the classes get very, very powerful spells at 5 and beyond. This is where the spells start to get absolutely insanely strong, even without SES. And with SES, some of them that you get are even more amazing. So you just don't have space for this spell. You just don't have space for it. What it does is not bad. Healing for 50 HP on average minimum is not bad at all. But you just, you don't need it. Heal is way better, and you have way better things here to take. So I have it at B tier. It's not completely useless, and there may be one situation where you want it, but for the most part, you just, I think I've taken this maybe once or twice in my life. You just, you don't have space for it at all. So, what it does is not bad, but compared to everything else, it's just, it's gotta be lower on the, on the totem pole for sure. Up next is Insect Plague. Insect Plague is absolutely amazing. This is available to Cleric and Druid only. And this is, if you're playing with core rules, no mods, probably the best spell in the entire game. Well, second best, because you get an improved version at level 7. But you know what I mean. This spell alone is what makes Druids S tier in Baldur's Gate. This shit right here. It's not Iron Skins. It's this shit right here. If you're playing without SES, just break their Baldur's Gate 2. This alone makes Cerned and makes Jahira one of the best companions you can get in the game. 
So this has been nerfed very, very heavily with uh, SES. And we'll talk about those nerfs in just a second. Um, so what this will do, decent cast time of five, last six rounds, it will target one creature and you'll spawn a mass of insects that fly towards that creature. Upon touching that creature, the insects will then spread out to all enemies within, I believe it's a 15 foot radius, but it doesn't actually say. Might say it somewhere else down here. No, it doesn't say it. So I believe it's a 15 foot radius. Um, it says 240 feet, uh, but that's a fucking lie. Um, so invisibility is no protection, and the insects will spread to all enemies if they fail their save. With insects on them, they will take a minus two penalty to attack rolls in Arbor class. Every single, uh, sorry, not every single second. Every, uh, I think it's every two seconds for this spell. It doesn't say here. Anyways, um, they, uh, must, I'll just read it out loud. I'll just read it out loud and then I'll talk about what it does. Those affected suffer one point of piercing damage per second and fight with a negative two penalty to attack rolls and armor class. In addition, each round, the victim must save versus breath weapons at minus two or suffer a 100% chance of spell failure and must save versus spells at minus two or run in panic. Creatures protected from the damage, such as by stone skin, are unaffected by the secondary effects as long as their protection lasts. And that was what it did baseline in the original SOA. And now this is the nerfs that it got with Icewind Dale. Or excuse me, with SES. Insects summoned by a spell are not themselves magical creatures. That means they are not repelled by magical protection. They are repelled by magical protection such as uh not excuse me, good lord. They're not repelled by magical protection such as anti-magic. However, their bites and stings are non-magical and cannot harm creatures that require magical weapons to injure them. The insects will shun the unnatural flesh of the undead and cannot penetrate barriers of extreme cold or heat like those by fired shield. Lastly, the death spell will destroy all hostile insects in the area of effect. There's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot to unpack here. There's an initial save that you get upon casting this spell. However, the spread, there is no save. So even if you su summon this at an enemy and he saves originally, he's still going to get insects on him. He's still going to get the insects on him. Every single time they bite, they have a chance to interrupt, which is once every second per round. So you're going to get hit six times per round. In addition, just having it up gives you... Basically, 100% chance of spell failure if they also fail their save with uh, breath weapons. But even if they pass that save, they're still getting hit six times per round. Six times. Even though it's only one damage. You know, it doesn't take much to interrupt spells. If they have stone skin up, they will not take damage. It will eat through their stone skin. As we just mentioned before, this will not affect undead. If you have protection spells up, they'll make you immune to physical damage, like divine protection or a uh, mantle or something like that. The insects will not do damage. If they have a fire shield or a cold shield up, they will also kill the insects. And a death spell will also kill the insects. So there's a lot of things that this doesn't work on anymore that used to in the original game. You could cast Creeping Doom on Kangax and it would solo him. That's level 7 version. Level 5, he's immune to. But you could kill Liches with Creeping Doom... Uh, basically every wizard will become absolutely, will get absolutely dumpstered by Insect Plague. If they don't have the protections up, they will get absolutely destroyed. However, with SCS, they're going to have protections up, right? They're going to have their protections up. There isn't a spellcaster in this game who's not going to throw up mantle, protection from magical weapons, um, fire shield, death spell. They're going to have all that shit. Dragons have a death spell on command that they can use to kill summons. They'll do that for this. Uh, this will not affect any undead whatsoever, so that includes skeletons, mummies, ghouls, ghast, liches, etc., etc. Um, this will not work on golems because they have magic immunity. Uh, this will not work on enemies who are using uh, protection from conjuration spell immunity. So, in the original game, you would cast this mostly, really, on anything. In the original SOA, you'd cast this spell every time it was up, it would spread, and it would basically make any fight in the game trivial. Whether it was mass fighter, mass cleric, mass wizard, or just mass everything like Yagashura's in camp, Insect Plague would dumpster them all. This got nerfed heavily to where you could basically expect this to not do shit against wizards for the most part. This won't do shit against wizards for the most part. However, this is still absolutely amazing against fighters. This is still absolutely amazing against thieves. This is absolutely amazing against clerics. And for the occasional wizard who no longer has spell protections, or if you get this off in between the spell protections, like you time it just right, it is incredibly useful. Also, extra fun little tip here, you can cast this on party members. And what I mean by that is, if you have, 
if there is a large group of enemies ahead of you, say a group of beholders, for example, you can have a skeleton walk into the beholders. You can stand here, cast Insect Plague on the skeleton. The insects are flying through the air. The skeleton walks towards the beholders. The beholders are right here. The insects will catch up to the skeleton, who is now completely destroyed by the beholders because there's ten of them, and they're hitting him with all that stupid bullshit. However, the insects still continue to the skeleton's corpse and then spread to all the beholders. And you could do that for pretty much anything. If you're too afraid of getting in melee combat or you don't want your wizard to get in the line of sight of an opponent because he might turn and hit you with some bullshit, you can use... Or not wizard. Druid. Shaman. There's the ones classing that shit. If you uh, don't want to get into melee range, you don't want to get close or line of sight, you can cast this from a distance on a party member or a summon, have them run in, and then the insect plague will spread and hit everything. So you can basically use this to hit enemies off screen. And I know it's only a minus two penalty uh, to save, but this shit happens all the time. Enemies get panicked by insect plague all the fucking time. All the time. Because this happens every single round. Every single round, they have to save again. And if they fail their save again, they get feared again. They get spell failure again. And it's just absolutely incredible what this spell does. Even with all these nerfs, I don't think there's a spell in this game that has been nerfed more than Insect Plague, and I really mean that. There isn't a spell in the game that's been nerfed more than Insect Plague with SES. And it is still absolutely amazing spell. It is absolutely incredible. Probably the best spell that druids get, aside from the upgraded version that they get at level 7, is Insect Plague. It is beyond insanely good. If you're fighting anything that's not immune to it, you want to cast this spell. This spell alone will turn the tide tremendously in your favor. It's amazing what it does. The physical damage is pretty much non-existent, right? It's a non-issue. One damage per second for six rounds? Who cares, right? That's 36 damage. 36 damage, that's it. But that's per person. And in addition to the other penalties they get, it's just incredible what this spell does. Absolutely amazing spell. This is typically what I stock my spell book with. If I'm playing a druid or a shaman, I take a buttload of these because they're absolutely amazing. Take this shit. If you're playing this game without SCS and you're not casting Insect Plague, you are doing it wrong. This spell is fucking busted. Take this shit. Take Seriously. Seriously, you guys need to take this shit. It's amazing. All right, up next, Iron Skins. This is also available to druid and shaman only. Uh, it has very long cast time of 9, duration of 12 hours, and this is basically the Druid Shaman version of Stone Skin. That's it. Every two levels of the caster, you'll get an additional skin. Every time they get hit, uh, they will lose one skin instead of taking physical damage. Amazing spell. Absolutely amazing spell. And this is one of the reasons that Druids get so fucking tanky compared to Clerics. Although Clerics do get Divine Protection, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, which scales actually way better than Iron Skins late game. But throughout early and mid SOA, Iron Skins is absolutely incredible for your Druid. And you get this in late Baldur's Gate 1 as well if you're playing a Druid. This spell is amazing. It's literally the Druid version of Stone Skin. There's really like nothing else you can say. That's awesome. Having this spell on is absolutely incredible. If you're playing a fighter druid, you can walk in a melee with iron skin and take zero damage. For a certain amount of time. Obviously, you're going to get hit eventually and you're going to start losing skins. But what's amazing about this is, unlike the mage, who does get, you know, spirit armor and some other shit, druids also at level 6 get a spell called Entropy Shield with SCS, which adds an enormous amount of AC. So you can combine that with a shield full plate because fighter druid can wear whatever the hell they want and you can actually hit ridiculous levels of armor class which will make your iron skin take forever to actually get dropped down mages have a million ways to not get hit you know they have protection from magical weapons they have mirror mages etc 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 but a fighter druid can actually hit a really respectable ac especially if it's getting buffed by a mage and a cleric and so this spell actually even though it looks on paper it's like yeah they get a stone skin which is cool but it's not that great it actually is that great. This spell is really, really great. If you're uh, playing a, um, a shapeshifter like Cerned, and you're shapeshifting into a greater uh, werewolf and you have iron skins on, because of the massive AC boost you get with greater werewolf and spells, you'll hit a ridiculous level of AC. You can actually hit the AC cap pretty fucking easily, especially with mage and cleric support. And so your iron skins are really unlikely to get dropped off, and as long as you have them, I mean, you can do whatever the hell you want. You can melee with impunity, you can cast with impunity. Amazing spell. There's really nothing else to be said about it. 
Great spell. 10 out of 10. Always take this shit. Up next is Magic Resistance. This is available to Cleric Druid and Shaman. Unlike these last two spells, which are Druid and Shaman only, this is available to everybody. Decent cast time of 9. We'll target one creature. <laughs> Excuse me. Last 3 plus 1 rounds per level. And it will give the recipient up to a maximum of 40% Magic Resistance. If the target has higher MR, it will lower it. This spell is okay. This spell is okay. Using this on your party is something I almost never do. It doesn't really stack with uh, with uh, the warrior fighter uh, magic resistance. Um, because that also will set MR. However, you can put equipment on top of this to boost MR. For example, if I cast this spell and then equip Karsamir, I will be at 90% MR. Depending on the version that you're playing and the mods that you're using. So that is a big thing. However, you have to re-equip the weapon. You have to re-equip the weapon. Actually, Carsimir, I think, actually is a full set. So, Carsimir wouldn't work. However, the Man Coat will work. Um, the Purifier will work. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Amulets that give you 10% MR work. Ring of Gax works, etc., etc. So, when you're combining a lot of other magical resistance equipment, you can actually combine that with this spell, and that does work. However, I still almost never use this spell. I still almost never use this. I don't trust magic resistance. It's good to have, but for some reason I still get hit and killed by shit all the time anyways. No matter how much I have. I have sent Vicky into a fight with 120% magic resistance and she still dies somehow. Enemies will hit you with lower resistance all the time. Um, yeah, you just you can't rely on this shit. You can't rely on this shit. And again, it also depends entirely on which mods you're in version you're playing. You can cast this on enemies. So if you're uh, trying to take down a planetar... Uh, you can cast, uh, you can cast Divine Protection, then walk up and hit it with a Magic Resistance, then have a Mage cast Lower Resistance, and now the Planetar has 0 MR. However, that's, that's something you'd only do in a very heavy Arcane or Divine playthrough. That's something you really never do with a heavy Fighter playthrough. Fighters have no problem murdering Planetars. Casters have a very hard time with Planetars, because they come with 100 MR. Um, there are some other demons in the game. Uh, Dragons will have MR. Uh, Mind Flayers have a ton of MR. So you can use this to your advantage at times to lower the MR of enemies and then hit them with an additional lower magic resist wizard spell. And you can combine these two to basically put their MR at zero, which is nice, but that's a lot of prep work. And you will have to do that at times if you're playing heavy arcane. But as long as you have at least one or two fighters, this becomes almost a moot point. So, but it is something you can do. And if you do insist on running very heavy arcane, very low physical damage, this is a spell you're going to want to take and use in those situations. For that reason, I'm going to leave it at B tier. It does have some uses both offensively and defensively. But um, because it does the set thing, it's you can't combine it with a lot of really cool items and effects, which kind of sucks. So for that, we're going to leave it at B tier. Up next is uh, Mass Cause Light Wounds. This is another spell that came over from Icewind Dale. And this is basically the offensive version of Mass Cure. This is available to Cleric, Druid, and Shaman. Decent cast on a 5. We'll do 1d8 plus 1 per level of damage to all enemies. And if they successfully save, the spell does half damage. The spell has no effect on undead constructs or extra planar creatures. What an absolute joke of a spell. 1d8 plus 1, and then they get to save to cut it in half on top of it. If you're a level 10 cleric casting this spell, this spell will deal maximum 18 damage. 18 to enemies. 18. If they save, that means they deal you did 9 damage per enemy. And if you end up getting a 1 right here, that means you did 5 damage per enemy. 5. 5. Not 1, not 2, not 3, not 4, but 5 damage at level 10. Remember Call Lightning that Druids get at level 3? That was 1d8 per level. And it went on round after round after round, striking people. As a level 3 spell. I just... This spell sucks. Even if you're a pure cleric at level fucking 50 with the XP cap removed, this will deal 50 damage per enemy, and they get to save to cut it in half. It just... It kills me. Skull Trap, Fireball, even single target spells will do so much more damage than this Holy Smite, for example, will do way more damage than this spell ever could. I just, I don't even understand why it's here and not buffed. It's so incredibly weak. And the fact that it doesn't do damage to undead on top of it, like, you kidding me right now? What the hell? What a joke of a spell. C tier all the way, big pass on that shit. Up next is Mass Cure. This is a weird one for me. It has a decent cast time of five, 15 foot radius, and it will heal all your party members for 1d8 plus one per level. 
This spell on paper sucks, but for some reason, I still take and use it all the damn time. I don't know why, but I still take and use it all the time on Aerie. If I have Aerie in the party at level 5, she's going to be taking a Mass Cure for some dumbass reason. She's going to have a Chaotic Commands, and she's going to have a Mass Cure and a Righteous Wrath of the Faithful. I don't know why I can't stop taking this spell, but I take it and use it all the damn time. I have no idea why. Because it sucks. It actually sucks. I think it's just because I'm lazy and I don't want to pop potions on everybody for the little damage they take from spirit armor wearing off, so I just cast Mass Cure. But really, this spell is not great. I'm going to leave it at B tier just because for some dumbass reason I can't help but taking it and using it. It's like Defensive Harmony, the level 4 spell we talked about. On paper, it sucks. 2 AC to your party, level 4 spell lasts 6 rounds. That's garbage compared to so many other spells you get in this game that are both lower, that are lower as well. And it's just, but for some reason, I can't stop taking it. I can't stop taking it and using it. So B tier, you can use this to give your party a decent amount of healing. If you're running very heavy arcane and divine, where your party members don't have a lot of HP, taking two of these compared to taking, uh, you know, a bunch of other shit is not bad. It's not bad. You can also ba basically guarantee that your party members will get healed to full on rest. But this stage of the game, you're going to have so many level 1 and 2 spells where you can take um, Cure Light Wounds and Cure Medium Wounds, and you can use that to heal, and that's what I typically do. But if you don't want to do that, or if you're just having really heavy Arcane Divine Party, and they're taking damage from Spirit Armor, or they get smacked with a Melf or something, Mass Cure is not bad. Not bad in those situations, but don't stack your spellbook with this unless you're running really heavy Divine Caster. Up next, Physical Mirror. Physical Mirror used to be a crappy spell, but with the new SCS, it's actually still a really crappy spell. So this has a decent cast time of 5, last 9 rounds. We'll target the caster only. And basically what it does is anytime you get hit with a ranged weapon, it will reflect it. That's all it does. That's literally all it does. That's it. And on paper, that's like, that's awesome. I played Baldur's Gate 1. Range weapons are devastating. That's true. But you don't get this in Baldur's Gate 1 unless you're a druid. In Baldur's Gate 2, enemies don't use ranged weapons. They just don't. They just fucking don't. You might run into a couple kobolds, but that's it. Who uses ranged weapons in Baldur's Gate 2? Maybe a couple shadow thieves will start throwing daggers at you. Maybe when you're doing the slaves, uh, trying to free the slaves, there'll be a couple dudes with those longbows, and they'll shoot you with a regular arrow. Big fucking deal. I I'm, I'm literally racking my brains right now, trying to think of a time where you're getting hit by ranged attacks. You have Elisara, and you have Cadibri from uh, Drizzt's party. That you kill in Baldur's Gate 2. That's literally the only two enemies I can think of. That are actually, you know, nasty enemies. Where you'd be like, I need a physical mirror here. And you know what? There's a shield that Rybald sells for two grand. That does the exact same thing. So it's just like... And if you cast this spell, by the way, they'll stop shooting you. If you're playing with SCS, they're not morons. They're not going to keep shooting you and reflecting the damage onto themselves to kill themselves. Alright? They'll swap targets. So it's just like, I don't understand. Not to mention at level 6 you get Entropy Shield, which makes you immune to ranged weapons completely. So it's like, where the hell do you use this shit? Where the hell do you use this shit? I'm, I'm literally trying to think right now of another time where you're getting hit by a lot of ranged weapons. Maybe the Quote to Woe in Underdark? Maybe that wouldn't be too bad. They do shoot a lot of paralytic bolts. But I think that's literally it. That's literally it. And like I said, there's a shield that Rybald sells that everybody who can use shields can use, can have. Not even take up a level 5 spell slot, so... This spell is just crap. Um, it was crap in the original unmodded game, and it's crap in this version too. It's just... It's, it's just shit, man. Alright, that's enough talking about it. Let's fucking move on. Uh, that was available to Cleric, Druid, and Shaman, by the way, in case you were wondering. Up next is Pixie Dust. Pixie Dust is basically the level 5 Druid Shaman version of uh, AoE Invis. Cast time of 9, so very long cast time, 15 foot radius, and it will make everything go invisible for 24 hours. Exact same as the mage version at level 3. So, the mage version at level 3 is an awesome spell. You can basically use that as an oh shit button, you can use that to travel to areas safely, but this is a level 5 spell, and you're a druid. I guess you could be a shaman too. But druids especially don't get a lot of level 5 spells. They're screwed because of the way their, uh, their class works. 
it's like they get another level 750 then 1.5 mil then 3 million they unlock and then they get a buttload of level 5 spells but until they get that 3 million mark in the druid class they really only get a couple level 5 spells three if you're sitting on a, a buttload of wisdom as the main character but uh that's it that's it and if you're a fighter druid oh it's even worse fighter druid you're stuck with two for ages you're stuck with two for a hell of a long time so you really can't afford to waste a level five spell slot on something a wizard can do at level three you know what i mean and wizards have plenty of level three spells they get tons you have the ring of acuity you have the zerth blade um there's all sorts of ways to get a buttload of low level spells and druids druids don't get that shit they don't druids and clerics don't get items that give them a ton of extra spells and Baldur's gate one they have a ring that gives them an extra spell of every level which is very good they don't get that shit in bg2 actually i think there was a way to get that in bg2 i don't remember now it was a long time since i played with that shit or maybe i'm an idiot i don't know anyways you don't get a lot of level five spells as a druid so you really don't ever want to take this shit like literally ever there's no reason to take it mages can do it it's not a bad spell so i'll leave it at b tier but you really never ever want to take it up next is spike stones this is a spell added by icewind dale duration of 12 rounds decent cast time of six eight foot radius and this will make a certain area where anytime anybody walks into it they'll take 2d4 points of piercing damage per round and they must make a save or spell or have its movement rate reduced by 30 percent it's whatever the level three version of this spell that makes them take 1d4 piercing and 1d4 uh, slashing damage does the exact same damage this does and it does it at level three Granted, they don't actually have to save or have their movement rate reduced, but there's no penalty here either. And this will also hit everyone in your party. So I just... the spell is crap. If you want to do AoE damage as a druid at level 5, as a druid or shaman, use Insect Plague. Don't waste your time with Spike Stones. Really, there's nothing else to be said here. It's just crap. The movement rate reduction is fairly nice, but there's other there's better ways to do that. It's better to use Flail of the Ages or hit him with a slow. Up next is True Seeing. True Seeing is... This is a tough one for me. This is really tough for me. I am torn between moving this from S tier to A tier. This will have a decent cast time of 8. will last for one turn. And every single round, it will dispel pretty much every illusion spell somebody has up. Reflect Image, Invis, Mirror Image, Non-Detection, Improved Invis, Shadow Door, Mislead, Project Image, and Simulacrum. And it will also make you immune to blindness as well last for one turn but the problem is this only goes off once per round so if there's a bunch of thieves in the next room and they're invisible if you cast true seeing they'll all get dispelled but the first thing they're gonna do is chug an invis potion and then they're gonna run in to backstab you and this spell will not tick quickly enough to interrupt them before they get the backstab off and for that reason just like this has the same uh check as fine traps grease uh cloud spells to where you can weave in and out basically and where this won't do what you want it to do at times late in the game soa and uh throwing a ball especially enemy thieves will have like not just one but they'll have two three maybe even five invis potions on them and they'll just chain chug that shit and go in for backstabs and true seeing alone is not enough to deal with that you need to have somebody else casting detect invis on top of true seeing and for a level five spell this is really good what it does but most of the time you're going to be end up most of the time you end up using this not to get rid of somebody's mirror image or invisibility you mostly end up using this to get rid of people who are just spamming invis pots and this kind of sucks at that because when you're fighting an enemy spellcaster you usually only need to do detect invis once or if he has spell immunity divination on it this doesn't do anything at all right so you have to use a thief so where you end up using this more often is to deal with thieves but it just it's not really great for that this spell does make you immune to blindness with SES, which is really nice. Um, Powered Blind is a really very common spell that enemies will use a lot, especially late TOB. Um, so this is nice there, but at the same time, it's just, it's it's tough. I'd like to give this an S tier spell, but I think I'm going to actually drop it to A tier. I'm going to leave this at A tier just because where you end up using it the most is against thieves because you want this to be happening more than once right detect invis is not enough for a thief but detect invis is damn fine when you're fighting a wizard so i don't know it's tough i'm gonna leave it at a tier i think I, I think a tier is the right place for this this spell is still really amazing um but at the same time you take this once on one person and that's it you know what i mean uh as for the uh shaman spell they get they basically get uh resurrection or excuse me not resurrection raise dead it's a recall spirit, long cast time of 9, and we'll raise somebody back from the dead, putting them at 1 HP. That's it. That's literally it. 
It's Raise Dead. So I guess it's an A tier spell because Raise Dead is situationally really nice, but it's not any better than Raise Dead. But then again, druids don't normally get Raise Dead, so I guess it's nice to have it on a shaman, but I don't know. I, I really wish shaman got better uh, shaman specific spells, to be honest. They would have been so much more fun to play. Okay. Alright, that is done with the uh, Druid and Shaman spells. Now we can move on to the Cleric spells. For some weird reason, uh, Clerics actually get a spell for evil only. Uh, good and neutral don't get a spell at level 5, but evil only, they get cause critical wounds. Cast time of 8 will target one creature, and it will do 5v8 plus 1 per level up to a max of 25 damage to the creature after touching it and casting time of 8. So this will do, on average, you know, 50 points of damage uh, if they fail their save at level 10 up to a maximum of, what is that? 40 plus 25, 65 at a max level of 25. Assuming, again, they fail to save. I don't like this spell. I don't like this spell because we've already talked about why Insect Plague is so damn good. We already talked about um, what Druids and Shamans get that is great for doing damage. But Clerics get a spell called Flame Strike. And Flame Strike does 1d8 points of damage per level. And when they save, they also take half damage, just like Cause Critical Wounds. Flame Strike also will do damage to undead players who are immune to this spell, along with constructs and extra planar creatures. Additionally, Flame Strike is from ranged, and it scales way better than cause critical wounds, and it does more base than cause critical wounds. So it's just, I don't understand where you'd ever want to use this spell. I don't. I have absolutely no idea where you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to hit him with the cause critical wounds. This won't do anything to liches. So, this is going to be useless there. I guess if you're fighting enemies that have fire resistance, and enemies do have a lot of fire resistance, but I think if you're fighting something with 50% fire resistance, it's still actually going to do more damage to cast Flame Strike. Not to mention, you don't have to walk into melee to do it. This spell is just garbage. C tier all the way. Pass that shit. Up next is Champion Strength. Champion Strength will be a very quick cast time of two. We'll target one creature, lasts for uh, three rounds per level, and it will give them a bonus Thacko at a rate of one for every three levels of the caster. And it will set their strength to 18. Additionally, while this spell is being uh, cast, the cleric cannot cast additional spells. Absolute garbage spell. For this right here alone makes this trash, but then when it also reduces their strength to 18 00, that just makes it even worse. So that little boost of a Thacko, it's not terrible, but a lot of your damage in Throne of Ball, especially, is going to be coming from not weapon damage, but strength. Strength, uh, Grand Mastery, and then uh, the enchantment of the weapon, and then the weapon itself. So in Baldur's Gate 1, if you have less than 19 strength, which you do unless you're an orc, a big part of your damage is actually weapon damage, right? You do 1d8 damage with a sword. And then you'll get, like, maybe 3 extra damage from having decent strength, and then you'll get, you know, an extra 2 damage from uh, being specialized in the weapon. So you'll say you'll deal on average 5 to 15 damage with a long sword. A big chunk of that is the longsword itself. And throwing a ball, it changes. And throwing a ball, you're going to be sitting on 25 strength with Chrome Fair, uh, sitting on 25 strength with spells, sitting on 22 strength with uh, the belt of the Fire Giant, sitting on 21 or 20, depending on what other belts you're using. In addition, you're going to be using a plus 5 weapon, which is going to do an extra 5 damage right there. If you're using uh, a weapon that does elemental damage, you have the elemental damage on top of it. If you're a pure fighter, you have Grand Mastery at this point, which is going to be doing additional damage. So the weapon damage of a weapon itself ends up becoming basically a non-factor. It's still, you know, important, but it becomes a non-issue. A big portion of your damage is not going to be coming from weapon damage, but from strength. And so that makes this much, much, much worse than it looks on paper. Because you're like, yeah, I lose a little bit of strength, but I gain an extra Thacko. That is not worth it at all. Late SOA and TOB, Thacko becomes irrelevant. And early SOA and TOB, you can't cast spells while using it, so you still don't want to do the damn thing. You still don't want to use it. Uh, there might be a situation, like if you're playing with, you know, created characters, or uh, you're, you don't have Corgan in your party, and you want to melee with somebody who has low strength, this will boost them up to a decent amount, but... There's so many ways to boost strength in Baldur's Gate 2 SOA. There's so many ways. You have gloves, you have belts, you have spells, you have all sorts of equipment that does it. You have the trials. It's just, you don't need this shit. And again, the fact that you can't cast spells is just beyond me. Beyond me. Absolute dog shit spell. Big pass. Don't ever take it. Uh, we're going to talk about Cure Critical Wounds. Up next is Divine Protection. This is probably the best spell that clerics get from um, Icewind Dale. 
along with the advanced version. Uh, this will last three rounds, extremely quick cast time of one, and this will make them completely immune to physical damage. This is basically protection from magical weapons, um, uh, but for uh, clerics. Druids don't get it. This spell is incredible. We already talked about before why protection from magical weapons is one of the best spells in the game, especially in TOB. Because enemies will be using Greater Whirlwind all the time or Critical Strike with a buttload of attacks per round. So even on a decked out mage with stone skin, it's very easy for those skins to disappear in seconds. It's very possible for a fight. If you don't have, let's pretend that you have a thousand HP and you're tanking three fire giants in uh, throwing a ball on insane difficulty without a stone skin. You will take over 800 damage in one round from those enemies. Over 800. If you have a stone skin, that stone skin will wear off in less than three seconds. If you have a mirror image in stone skin, that stone skin will still wear off in less than three seconds. Because they'll all be popping whirlwind, and we're getting hit 30 times by fire giants. A stone skin, it don't matter what level you are. That stone skin is going to disappear real fucking quick. An AC does not scale well and throw the ball. It does not. So divine protection is absolutely critical if you want to be playing a cleric and throwing a ball especially because there's drow and all sorts of enemies who are going to be trying to backstab you as well and this is the only way to keep your cleric's face is pretty it is very common for me to lose a cleric um in throwing a ball it's just super common for my clerics to die i think we have one game where vicky actually made it to a melison it's just so damn easy for her to get popped with this spell it's a lot less likely that she's gonna die she still can but this spell is absolutely amazing for keeping your clerics alive during very physical heavy fights. Amazing spell. Super, super good. It lasts one round less than protection from magical weapons, but it's still incredibly powerful. Very, very strong. Take this shit. Especially late TOB, you want to have many, many of these. Fighter mages will typically uh, reserve almost all their level 6 spell slots for protection from magical weapons. Clerics, especially fighter clerics, are going to do the same thing with divine protection. Up next, Flame Strike. Flame Strike is an amazing spell that you just almost never get to take in, uh, early on, but you get to take a lot of later, which is really nice. This will do 1d8 points of fire damage to one creature, and if they save, they will take uh, half damage. Decent long cast time of 8, but this hits really, really hard and scales really, really well. So a level 20 cleric is going to do 20d8 up to 160. They save, gets chopped in half to 80 damage. And, you know, considering rolls, this is still going to do 60 or 70 damage pretty easily. This scales really, really well. You can spam it, having multiple clerics using it at once. It is very, very easy for you to nuke people into the ground with this shit. This spell alone is the reason why you have to take protection from fire at all times once you get to the Underdark. Because Drow Clerics love to cast this shit. And I've had people perma so many times when I wasn't paying attention by just one flame strike. This is an awesome spell. It doesn't seem like it on paper, right? Because when you compare this shit to Call Lightning, Call Lightning is an awesome spell. But Flame Strike can be done indoors as well. And it does fire damage. So there is that. But it's still really the best damage spell that clerics get, honestly, aside from Implosion at level 7. And for that reason, I'm going to leave it at A tier. I really never have space for this spell just because Divine Protection is so good, along with Chaotic Commands and uh, Righteous Wrath of the Faithful. But if you need some damage or you're going Heavy Cleric, take a couple Flame Strikes, have everybody cast on one target, and watch that dude get melted. His face is going to melt right off of this shit. It hits really, really hard. So A tier spell, definitely not S tier because of the because of what it does, especially compared to Call Lightning and the fact that it is fighter, but still or uh, fire, but it's still really, really good. Up next is Greater Command. Greater Command um, is basically a better version of Command, but it's just it's basically the same as Emotion Hopelessness, to be honest. 15 foot radius will put everyone to sleep, lasts for one round per uh, I think it's level, right? Yeah, one round per level. Uh, but it has a very quick cast time of one. Um I almost never take this, just because at this stage of the game, for some reason, everyone, uh, this just never hits anybody. I have no idea why, but this just, I never seem to hit anybody with this spell. Same thing with Emotion Hopelessness. This, These spells, when you get hit by them, are devastating. But every time I use them, I just, it never seems to do what I want it to. I don't know why. Um, I'm going to leave it at B tier, just because what it does, when it does work, is really, really nice. But so many enemies become immune to uh, the unconscious uh, sleep effect that um, I just really never use this outside of Shadows, uh, outside of uh, Athkotla itself. And it's kind of a shame, but you just really don't get space for it because 
if you're running with one cleric, that cleric's job is to cast Righteous Wrath of the Faithful and Kedak Commands. Right? They don't have space for Flame Strike and uh, Greater Command. If you have multiple clerics, you can start taking this shit. And it is pretty good. But it is the exact same as Emotion Hopelessness. So, for that reason, I'm going to leave it at B tier. It's not a terrible spell. It's definitely not C tier. But I don't stock my spellbook with this shit. I just don't. Even if I'm running with multiple clerics, I might take one on each one. Have everyone do it at once and see how many people we get to put to sleep. But, yeah. It's okay. Not amazing, but it's all right. Up next is Raise Dead. We already went through uh, these already for the cleric or for the Druid Shaman portion of this. Uh, Raise Dead, just like we talked about, Recall Spirit brings somebody back from the dead. Amazing. Puts them at one HP. Very long cast time. Don't really want to use it in combat because it's very easy for them to get permed by that. So A tier. Um, situationally, this spell is absolutely critical, um, but this is not something you want to stock your spellbook with, obviously. Up next is Repulse Undead. This is an interesting one. This one will last for one turn, decent cast time of five, and it will, every round, it will push Undead away from you. No save. One wave per round for one turn. This is a weird spell. Because you'd want to use this when you're getting overwhelmed by Undead. The problem is when you're getting overwhelmed by Undead, you don't have time to cast the spell. And it doesn't take long for a butt buttload of vampires to just turn your tear your party apart. Not to mention, for some dumb reason, this does not go through MR. And most undead have MR. So, basically any skeleton warrior that's not base skeleton warrior has MR. Uh, greater mummies have MR. Liches have MR. Uh, any vampire above elder has... Uh, any vampire above... Um, excuse me, I should just say elder and above has MR. And so it's like, where the fuck do you use this spell? You'd want to use this spell on those nasty undead, but you don't get a chance to. Additionally, it procs once per round. So that means if you cast this and they run towards you after the spell round went off, they don't get pushed back for six seconds. And there are just so many times where I feel like this spell should be working and it doesn't. And so I just, I don't really find a time to use this. I just don't. Not to mention that if you are winning the fight, you don't want to use this because it's going to push the undead away from your fighters. So it's just like... I don't know using this on the shadows maybe but if you're but why don't you just turn undead at that point you know what i mean like if you're fighting shadows turn undead will kill them even as airy you have a good chance of killing shadows so i don't understand where you'd want to use repulse undead i just don't understand where you'd want to use this shit i have it at c tier uh, if you find a way to make this work let me know and we'll adjust it but i'm gonna leave it at c tier because i've tried to use this spell many times and every time i'm like wow this spell sucks so I'm going to leave it at C tier. Up next, Righteous Magic. Righteous Magic is, depending on your class, C tier or S tier. This will last for one round per level. Very long cast on a 9. And it will add one extra HP and one extra point of strength up to a max of 25. If you are a fighter cleric, taking Righteous Magic is awesome. Will boost your strength score tremendously. We already talked about why strength is so important in throwing a ball in SOA. Because it's a big portion of your damage. And you'll do a hell of a lot more damage with this shit. If you are a pure cleric, you're going to be sitting on one APR. Two of, two of your dual wielding four with improved haste. So having Righteous Magic is really whatever. I mean... Having more strength and a couple more hit points is nice, but this is a level 5 spell slot. You don't get many of these for a while as a cleric. Late in TOB, yeah, you can start casting this all you want. And that means your slang damage is going to be doing a hell of a lot more, but whoopty fucking do right? Whoopty fucking do It's okay, but if you're a fighter cleric, this spell is where this shit really shines. Or if you're using the, um, uh, the improved uh, spell progression for uh, Paladins and, uh, sh and uh, the other class. That sucks. The shitty class that's not Monk, the second shittiest class, Ranger. That's the word. If you're using the improved spell progression tables for those two classes, this spell is actually pretty nice on them. But that's it. Fighter Cleric, Paladin, and Ranger, if you're using that component. Otherwise, the spell is just whatever. Like I said, if you're attacking with a sling, um, this will boost your damage by quite a bit. But you don't get many attacks per round as a pure cleric. You just don't. You get one. That's it. Two of you have improved haste. Or fucking two of you have regular haste. You know what I mean? So it's just... It's whatever. Um, Like I said, just depends on your class, really. The spell could be really useful or really crappy. Up next, Righteous Wrath of the Faithful. Unlike the others, this spell is amazing. This is probably the best spell clerics get at this level aside from Divine Protection. Last one round per level. Decent cast time of eight. This came over from Icewind Dale, in case you were wondering. This will make every ally in the area get plus one to attack and saving throws. Plus eight HP. 
Um, and if they're the same alignment, they will get two to their attack, damage, and saves, and we need to charm and hold. However, you don't want to do that. What you want to use this for is a plus one attack and saving throws, plus eight bonus HP, and stack this with recitation, prayer, and chant. You stack these three spells. I mean, technically that's four spells. Chant, prayer, recitation, righteous wrath of the faithful. And your cleric has boosted your party through the fucking roof. Um, this alone is actually really not all that great. But when you combine this with the other three spells I just mentioned, you're getting such an incredible boost to your party. It is beyond absurd. Especially if you have a mage casting the emotion, courage, and hope on top of it. It's almost too much how much you're boosting your party. It's almost too much. However, if you have the same alignment, you cannot get improved haste. This secondary effect will come into play. So you really want to have a cleric casting this spell with a different alignment if you can. If you are playing with Corrigan and you are an evil fighter, you want to have Aerie cast this shit. If you are playing with Keldorn or Valigar or Minsk and you're a lawful good fighter, you want to have Vicky cast this shit. Because losing out on improved haste basically nullifies this and then some. Losing out on improved haste is terrible. So you really want to have that shit. The other things you get here aren't bad, but it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough at all. So you have to be careful with that. Um, but again, like I said, this by itself is crap, but when you combine it with the others, man, such a massive, massive boost to your stats. I'm going to leave it at uh, S tier just because, again, you, when you combine it with that shit, it's incredible. We take and use this spell along with these all the time because they're so fucking good amazing amazing combination and especially if you're a cleric with a uh, cleric mage like uh, area is you can actually chain contingency these to just fire off all at once which is just hilarious absolutely hilarious you can contingency and chain contingency your contingency will cast a uh, um, fucking chant and your chain contingency will cast prayer recitation and righteous wrath of the faithful and you just buff the shit out of your whole party instantly at the start of a fight amazing spell up next is slay living slay living sucks ass this is a uh, oops, cleric only spell. Very quick cast, I'm a one, but this is yet another crappy touch spell. You'll have to walk up and touch somebody. If you miss your attack, um, it fizzles, which is garbage. If you land the attack, they'll take 2d6 plus 9 damage, which is garbage, and they must save or spell or be instantly killed. Garbage. I mean, <laughs> this is just crap. Not only do you have to land the attack, but even if you land it, all they do is take the same damage you'd be doing normally, <laughs> and then they have a chance to die. Whoopty fucking do, dude. Harm is actually really useful as a fighter cleric because you can cast improved critical strike to guarantee that you don't miss. And you could do the same thing for slay living, but you only get to slay living once. If you could actually do this multiple times, like some of the other touch spells do, where you can basically spam it, that would be really cool. But you don't. You only get it once. And that makes this spell garbage. Because if you are a fighter cleric, you do more than 2d6 plus 9 damage per hit anyways. So having a level 5 spell to have a chance to kill someone. I mean, Chromatic Orb has a chance to kill someone. You know what I mean? This spell sucks ass. C tier all the way. And finally, we have Undead War. This is another one that's really interesting that came over from Icewind Dale. Decent cast time of 7. 10 foot radius lasts one turn. And when the cleric casts this spell, at that spot is where this spell works. And what will happen is if any undead enter that spot, they will be under the effect of turn undead by the cleric. This is interesting. Because if you're a cleric and you're fighting a buttload of undead, or about to, like say you're about to do Bodhi shit, you can have this cast multiple times. And then aggro the undead, and when they all charge in, chances are they're going to be turned by one of these spells. Which is really interesting. Chances are they're going to be turned by one of these spells. Because then you can turn undead on top of it. Um, the, you only get to turn a people with this once. Um, if, for example, uh, if an undead walks into this and it fails to get turned, it's basically immune to it. Um, but if you, again, you can cast this more than once. You can cast this more than once with multiple clerics and then turn undead on top of it. Or, let's say you're walking into a choke point and there's undead here, undead here. You can cast the spell right here and then go and turn undead yourself over there. And that's kind of interesting. This spell is still shit, however. It's still C tier. But I like spells that are interesting. Even if they're absolute dog shit of a spell, I like spells that are interesting. 
Because the main problem is this undead ward is based on your cleric's level. So if your cleric can't turn shit anyway, this spell is completely fucking useless. If you're a fighter mage cleric, or a paladin with expanded spell progression, or anything really but a pure cleric, you're not gonna turn out anything anyways. Because you just- you don't have the XP for it. You just don't have the levels. So... If you turn, like, some low-level shadows and kill them instantly, hey, that's, you know, that's kind of cool. But you want to turn a Lich or something? If you're not a pure cleric, that shit's not fucking happening. And even if you are, if you're playing with mods, that shit's still not fucking happening. So, this spell still sucks ass. But it's cool. It's interesting. It's different. And you know what, boys? I like shit that's different and interesting. All right? All right, that is going to do it here for lads. I appreciate you guys watching, as always. I apologize this took so long to get out, and I know it's, you know, really boring. There's nothing really cool or interesting you can do with these spells. There's so much fun shit you can do with Mage, and not so much shit with uh, Divine. But we're getting to the end of Divine, which is great. Six and seven have some really spicy spells in them, so... I'm excited to be finally finishing the series. As always, if you disagree with me on something, if you love a particular spell, let me know in the comments. If you hate a particular spell, if you think that I'm a moron and I should stop making videos, let me know as well, dude. Because every time you comment, I get money from YouTube. I'm kidding. Yeah, YouTube doesn't pay me shit. But let me know in the comments, dude. I love you guys. Thanks so much, as always, for watching, dudes. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And remember, no matter what happens in life, boys, you're the best there ever was and ever will be. I love you, and God loves you, and you can do anything in life, lads. And don't you ever forget it. Thanks for watching, my dudes. We'll see you next time. Peace.